All right, good evening, everybody. Are you ready for the presentations? I'm hoping you're ready. I'm seeing some very good. I got one for feedback and it was really good. So I'm hoping you guys are ready. And um, so let's just wait a few minutes for the others to join us. So Georgette, you're ready, your group is ready. Evening, sir. I'm not seeing Rene or, oh, Rene is here. I'm okay. not seeing. <laughs> Who has the presentation? I hope all persons have a copy of the presentation. Yes, sir. Everyone has a present um, copy. Okay, all right, that's very nice. All right, thanks. Um, Jaheem, what about you? Your group is ready? No, sir. I'm not seeing any of them yet. So what about you? Do, don't you have a copy of the presentation? Sir, it's not a laptop, man. It's... Oh, OK. Olivia, your group is ready? Um, sir, I'm not seeing um, Yanni. Okay. But do you Even have, though a I have a um, copy of it, yeah. OK. Um, Hyman, is this Tony and Hyman? Your group is ready? Tony and Hyman, talk to me. Your group is ready for the presentation. You sound very muffled. Sounds like you have the fan on and it's blowing in your, in your microphone or it's blowing your words away. I'm not sure. Say that again, Miss Simon. I said, can you repeat back? I'm asking if you're ready for the presentation. Is your group ready for the presentation? Um, I don't know which presentation because I didn't come to the last class. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, just that one. It's blocking. Is Olivia Williams in this class? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you sent me a copy of it. Well, you, everybody has to, so. All right, so let's wait a few more minutes. I think we have far more students in the class than I'm seeing. And ensure that the names of your, the ID numbers of your group members are present on the, on the copy that you sent to me. You all, everybody has to email me their presentation with the ID numbers of your, put the names as well so that just in case, names and ID numbers, but you don't have to email me, email it to me right, right now. I'll give you um, the opportunity to do that at some point. I'm just waiting on the others. I have a much bigger class, just checking the, the actual. So for seven o'clock I have, I keep forgetting the number of students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let me see. I need to have at least seven students. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more student and we begin. Just give me a sec. Please call your group members because if they don't present, they're not getting any grade enough. I don't know where these students are. They're supposed to be in the class. And this is a late class so they can't say that they're coming from work and the sky is falling and the cold jumped over the moon and all these kinds of fierce excuses that I usually get. Accounts class still going on. I just came out of it. What is wrong I with these believe... teachers? So the others are still in class. Christ. Let's give them five minutes. 
teachers are not supposed to do. All right, it seems as if I have my class now. Hope I'm All right, let me just check my... Have you guys emailed your presentations? Please do so. This is the day group. I'm just checking my... paper. Or right, who was group one again? I'm checking my notes. Sir, excuse me. You said we should put um, our group member's name within the body of the, the email. Yeah, you can put it as a put it as a slide by itself, like the last, last slide. After you have like question and answer, you just have that part of it. All right, then, sir. Okay. And you don't have to do it right right now. It's just that when you, I want the email tonight before you go to sleep. So right after you have done that, you can add their names and uh, ensure that their ID numbers are there. That's very, very critical. I think I found it. Okay. All right. So Georgia Richards, your group, go ahead for me. Thank you.
sharing screen now, sir. Okay. Are you seen, sir? I am. Sir, we can go ahead now. Please do. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Georgette Richards, along with my team members, Renee Richards, and also we have a, a Miss Nicole Walters tonight. We are presenting from the World Health Organization. As you can see here, we are trying our utmost best to get you ready, to get your workplace ready for COVID-19. Now, how does COVID-19 really spreads? It spreads by one, it can be by someone who has the virus and they cough or they sneeze and it releases mist in the air. And those small particles can travel and stays on the skin for over four to five hours, leading you to having the infection. Two, it can also be that that same person can be coughing and that mist falls right on the desk, on the chairs, on the doorknobs, on the, on the pipes. So therefore we should learn to avoid touching our eyes or mouth and also our nose. These are the three main gates in which the virus can travel. Also, if we are not sharing a one meter apart, which means a six feet distance, you are reliable to be contaminated by that person. Mainly if that person is not wearing a mask or even if the person is do wearing a mask and they are not properly geared in terms of their mouth, both their mouth and their nose are not covered, then therefore it will cause them to maybe sneeze or cough and you standing directly in front of them, those mists can travel and cause you to become contaminated. No. How do you prevent an outbreak in your workplace? You have to wash your hands. As soon as you're through with whatever you're doing, your hands must be washed and it has to be thoroughly. So when you're washing your hands, you begin by turning on the top. When you turn on the tap, you get the soap. And applying the soap to your skin, you will wet that soap to, be, to allow it to become lathery. Running that, rubbing that soap, you're going to rub from your wrist 
you massage between your hands, between your nails. You go all the way up to your elbows, washing thoroughly. And then you run your hand under the, the pipe. And then your, your napkin would be down already from your napkin dispenser. You tear that napkin, you wipe your hands and use that same napkin to turn off the pipe and then you discard off that napkin. When you wash your hands and wipe your hands in that napkin, it means that you're germs free. Therefore, switching off the pipe, your hands will not become in contact with the pipe. The next one is uh, make sure that all of your areas are clean wherever you work. Ensure that you sanitize white after use. For example, for those of you who are working within the receptionist area of the job, you know that you would have to be using, giving individuals pen to sign documents. You would um, be interacting with them through paper. So my advice to you, after each use of the pen, you will sanitize that pen with a napkin. And also with the interaction of paper, I would advise that you use a glove. Now my other teammate, Renee, will explain further to you with the other factors. Over to you, Renee. Can you move the slide, please? Good. Promote good res respiration hygiene in the workplace. As Georgia said before, first we'd have to learn to wash our hands. Another thing that we have to do is to practice to wear our masks on a daily basis. We don't know who has COVID-19 and can transfer the virus to us. COVID, as a pandemic, COVID-19, key to prevent COVID risk. So these are some, we're gonna list some keys how to prevent um, the risk from um, getting COVID-19. So before meeting or event, we know now we're trying to eliminate the amount of meetings we're having in the workplace just to, to guide by the, gov the government protocol. So first, check the advice from the authority in the community where you plan to hold the meeting or event follow their advice so that's the first thing that we're going to do we're going to develop and de agree a pe a preparation preparation <laughs> preparedness, preparedness. <laughs> And to prevent infection at your meeting or event. So we're going to have all of these prepared um, via way before the meeting is planned. So if the meeting is the 24th, we'd, have, we'd start prepared from even the 10th or even the 9th. So by the time we have that meeting, we're well prepared um, for that. <coughs> Develop and agree a response plan in, in case someone at the meeting become ill or symptoms of or have any symptoms of COVID-19. During the meeting, right, so during the meeting, you want to provide information or briefing. Um, you basically want to provide information about COVID-19, how it can spread, the measures to take um, if somebody in the workplace may um, contact or come in contact with somebody that may have COVID-19. You want to displace um, dispensers of alcohol-based rubbing alcohol at almost every entrance in the workplace. So. 
let's say you have the meeting at Petra Jam. While the person enter Petra Jam at the security post, you would have some alcohol base, liquid or a wash area. While they step up to the re receptionist, you'd have alcohol based liquid right there for them to sanitize. So each and everywhere they go, they, they should be able to have a dispenser to sanitize and not the dispenser that your hand can touch, but something that is automatic. If there's a space arranged seating so that um, the participants are at least one feet or one meters apart from each other and open windows and doors. After the meeting, we'll allow um, Nicole to explain what will happen after the meeting. Oh, that's not mine. Okay. I retain the name of contact details of all participants for at least one month. So all the persons that should be at the meeting, as I said before, we're going to plan way ahead so one month before at least you should have all the names of the first that should be at the meeting and if we can we should investigate if they have come in contact with anybody that has covid19 if someone at the meeting or event was isolated as a as a suspended covid case the organizer should inform participants so we should not hide it we should, as best as possible, just to spread the word and let them know that we can come in contact with them. They should be um, isolated or that they should not be a part of the meeting. Stay home once they're tested positive for COVID-19. Continue. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nicole Walters. Um, picks up, picking up from where my, my colleagues live before traveling. Traveling tips on keeping yourself safe. Make sure your organization and its employees have the latest information on areas where COVID-19 is spreading. Uh, make sure all persons traveling to locations reporting COVID-19 are briefed by a qualified professional. For example, like a health, professional health care worker, staff, health services, and so forth. Next. While traveling, Encourage employees to wash their hands regularly and stay at least one meter away from people who are coughing or sneezing. Ensure employees know what to do and whom to contact if they feel ill while traveling. Ensure that your employees comply with instructions from local authorities and any local res restrictions on travel, movement, or large gathering where they are traveling. After traveling, employees who have returned from any area where COVID-19 is spreading should monitor themselves for symptoms for 14 days and take their temperature twice a day. For example, self-isolation. If they develop even a mild cough or low-grade fever, they should stay at home and self-isolate. So guys, let's watch this video on preventing COVID-19 in your workplace while teleporting.
COVID-19 in your workplace, whether you are at your work site or teleworking at home. Follow distancing measures issued for your location and stay informed through information from trusted sources, such as WHO and your local health authority. Stay at home and avoid direct contact with anyone if you feel unwell or even have a mild cough. This will help protect your colleagues at work and your family members at home. If you are feeling well and need to go to work, you can reduce your risk of catching the virus by avoiding crowded public transport. If possible, go by bike or walk. Otherwise, if possible, discuss with your supervisor if you can work from home. At work or at home, if you can, use the stairs instead of elevators. Avoid using your hands to touch common objects like elevator buttons, door handles or staircase railings. If you work in an office, create distance-based meetings either through video conferencing or by maintaining at least one meter space between people in the same room. If you work in contact with the public, stay at least one meter away from others as much as you can. After commuting to and from work and throughout the day, clean your hands frequently and thoroughly. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth and nose. Ventilate your workplace regularly, keeping the windows open if possible. Make sure tables, door handles and other frequently touched surfaces are disinfected regularly. Avoid crowded places and unnecessary public activities. Find no contact ways to greet your colleagues and express affection to your friends and family. While maintaining physical distance, stay social. Contact your family and colleagues regularly to check how they are coping. Remember to seek ways to stay active and positive. Stay healthy and let's all prevent the spread of COVID-19. Okay, guys, I do hope that you were in brief with whatever has been said today. Um, if for any reason you have any questions or any query, you can visit our website at www.who.int.emergencies.disease, novel coronavirus 2019. Or you can visit the other website stated below for any advice or guidance. Uh, any questions? All right, so thank you guys very much for uh, uh, a good presentation. I saw that the there was a lot of creativity that went into it. I hope you guys did it as a group and there wasn't any external assistance. Because no, as, sir. As I said before, I really want you guys to take some of the skills that I'm teaching you into your professional environment. And, you know, these are skills that companies want from people. Uh, it was really, really nicely um, put together in terms of the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, a, a quick question. Um, was the, was, the, was the video saying something different from what was already said? Or was it adding additional information? Sir, the video was just adding additional no, information. Possible play it for me, please. I thought I heard some repetition, some of what was said before. Uh, unless I'm mistaken. Um, unless I'm mistaken, but I, I'm almost sure I heard some. I, I, for me, I think the video should have, should have probably either end the presentation or probably um, should have come earlier in the presentation. It could be my own personal, it could be my bias, but I'm not sure that it was strategically placed in the presentation. I'm not sure that I'm not sure, but I, overall it's a very good presentation in terms of PowerPoint. I'm not going to comment on delivery because that's not what you're being graded on. You're not being graded on your delivery, you know, pronunciation and things like that and, and grammar and all of that. So I'm really looking at your PowerPoint presentation. So very nice, um, guys. So send this off to me, but remember, the slide that comes after thank you should have the names and, and um, ID numbers. Okay.
Okay, thank you. Sir? Yes? Uh, the reason why we placed the video to be last um, was because, you know, maybe because of a, after a long series of talking, someone would just want to maybe watch a little thing in order to go away with something. Mm -hmm. So that is why we placed it at the, the last, last slide. Oh, yes. And another thing that I should have commented on, I'm just remembering now, the contact detail was not properly done. You're giving people very long websites to go and check up on you. All you could have done is just to give them www.who.com slash um, COVID-19 in the workplace. You could have given them your hashtag, not your hashtag, you could have given them your social media handles, your probably phone number, email addresses. Normally you give them um, those kinds of details, not just a website. You give them information. Could you make a mic, please? Um, you give them information that is contact details that is easy to remember. So people remember a Facebook. So, so it could be that it's facebook.com slash WHO. It could be instagram.com slash um, WHO. And people remember that or at WHO. And people remember those kinds of things instead of this very long um, URL or website. Okay. But very good job, um, guys. Really, really good job in terms of the overall presentation i'll um send it off i'll allow panton to comment on it as well in terms of the look of it to and just to hear what he would um he has to contribute to the whole grading process all right all right Thank thanks so much sir uh, stop sharing for me our uh, mute your mics on me please why am I muting people and I'm not mute? Be able to mute everybody. Okay. All right. Um, Jaheem, go ahead for me. Your you and your group members, go ahead for me. Jaheem. Sir. Yes. Sir, I'm telling the enemy at the presentation. So where's the per who else is in the group? I'm giving you guys here if you don't present tonight and I'm just letting you guys know that. Okay. So all who's in the group and playing Dolly Host, I'm not into the foolishness tonight. All right. Social White, go ahead for me, you and your group members. Good night, sir. Coming up with the screen. Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. We're here from the World AIDS Organization. And tonight, we're about to do a presentation on COVID virus and workplace readiness. My group members are Kamalia Harrison, Karen Daly, Chazelle White, Sashai Mirud and myself, Patricia Williams. So, next slide, please. How does COVID, how does coronavirus COVID-19 spread? This is spread by coughing, sneezing, touching, and also talking this by doing oh, sorry this is spread by coughing talking and sneezing and the droplets are released on surface area whereby a person can then touch the area and then touches their face or their eyes and the virus then is con is in contact with the person Next one. Ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19 
in the workplace. So first you have to make sure your, work, your workplace are clean and hygienic. Why? When the droplets come in contact with surface area, for example, glass, it stays for five days. For wood surface, it stays for four days. Plastic and stainless steel, it will stays for three days. Cardboards, it stays for 24 hours. And copper surface, it stays for four hours. So you see, it takes a while for the virus to disappear from the surface. Hence, if there is any touching of the surface, then the person will come in contact with the virus. And so therefore they will now contact the virus. I'm um, sorry, they will now become prone to the virus. Hello? We are listening, go ahead with your presentation. Sorry, sir, it's a poor connection, sorry. Right, so um, the, once they touch the surface area, they will become in contact with the virus. Next, we have promote regular and thorough, thorough and washing. Now, once, it, once the virus is on any surface area, because the person can get in contact with the virus, you have to make sure that you wash your hands regularly. And to do so, you wet your hands with water, you apply enough soap to cover all hand surface area, you rub your hands together and scrub everywhere. Then you wash the front and back of your hands in between your fingers and under the nails. After you do so, you rinse the hand with water and dry hands completely using a single use towel or, air, or one of those air dryer. I will now turn over the next section of the presentation to Kerry and Bailey. So the prevention of COVID-19 continues. Um, promote good respiratory hygiene in the workplace. So by doing so, you should always wear your mask, Keep the ACs off um, and maintain social distancing. Next. Brief employees when um also directly should brief the employees and customers about how to prevent um, the COVID-19, the virus, so that um, they can prevent the spreading of it. So another way you can prevent it, uh, you can limit the numbers of persons in the office by allowing persons to work home if they can. And if persons are infected, then they will take the medication and uh, isolate. Next. Also keep promoting the stay at home messages even if they have only mild symptoms. As I said, um, when a person comes in contact with the COVID-19, they should stay at home. You can also, um, as a workplace, our family members keep checking in on them to find out how they are doing. And if the symptoms worsen, then you contact the health center, the health center, and uh, make it clear to employers that they will be able to count the time off as sick leave. So here's a video that gives you more information on the prevention of COVID-19. Volume, please.
we're not hearing the volume. The, apparently the person did not hit the, click the audio on the thing. So probably need to stop share and reshare in order for us to hear the audio, okay? So the video basically explain just give an um demonstration of what had previously explained in the slides before. Next. Go on. Next slide, the person who's responsible for changing the slide, next slide. There is not skipping, I don't know why it's not going. Amalia, stop sharing, let me try, I don't know. Probably what you need to do is to take it out of full screen and then go back. Take it off a of full screen and then go back. Take the entire presentation off full screen. Click on the square button to the bottom right. The square box on the bottom right of the, the, the YouTube channel thing that we're seeing on screen. It's bottom right. Right, click on that. Are you clicking on it? Yes, sir, but it's not. Hmm. Press escape and see what happens. Oh, it wasn't embedded in the presentation. Is that video that was outside of the presentation? No, sir, it is in the presentation. All right, just go back to the presentation now. Okay, try let Patricia share it. Let me do in Google Docs. Remember your mic is on, okay? If you're not able to share, just allow someone else to share in the interest of time. Patricia, go ahead. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to do that now. Yeah. 
You're giving me a little problem. Hold on. I don't know what happened. It's not sharing on my thing either. Um, is the same present? Was it emailed? Not yet, sir. It was emailed as yet. Are you the only two persons? Is there anybody else in the group that can try and share the slide? Sir, actually there, were, there are the two persons who have a laptop in the room. And none of them are able to share? Right. So sir, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again, sir. See in the screen now? It's coming up. It's back. So let's go okay. past the video. Yeah, I'm past it already. Okay. Go ahead, Chazelle. Sorry, colleagues, for the technical difficulties. So we get back right on track. So before preparing or before doing a meeting or event, there are some key considerations that a person should take in order to prevent or reduce the spread of COVID-19. These are, so you're gonna check for advice from authorities, which mean that the person that is above or at the head of the table needs to confirm with them if the meeting can be held, where it can be held, how many persons face to face and get everything checked in terms of um, the connectivity. So like we won't have the issue that we're having now with the, with the presentation. Secondly, You develop and get, you're, you're going to prepare a plan. Your strategy ready, your policies and procedures ready to make the meeting an effective one. And if you are considered face to face meeting, you should know how many persons should be there, the distance, make sure the area is clean and very sanitized and all of those things put in place. Next slide, please. Okay. We're not hearing any words. We're seeing the screen, but we're not hearing any words. Sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, so I was saying before you, you conduct a meeting, you need to check with the relevant authority to see if what you're doing is up to standard. You need to check with the helper, um, pro healthcare providers. For example, if you're staging a, a chalk meet, and you need to go and check with the health authorities to get all the things put in place so it can be an effective track meet. So you need to have the sufficient and the relevant persons to make the meet 
the meeting a successful one in terms of the person, the genitized persons, make sure all the sanitary, all the areas are very sanitized. You have sanitization area there, proper walk, soap and water, if this is done there. I make sure all the participant temperature is checked. They are, their hands are very sanitized. And things are in the right order. Next slide, please. So before the meeting, is being conducted. So make sure that all the persons are there, provide their contact details in case anything or anything come up, you need to check back all of those information and stay clearly the details shared. If something do happen that all of these details will be shared with the health authority. Next slide, please. So during the meeting, make sure you build trust with the participants and make sure that during the meeting, their, their social distance is being exercised, so no unshaking. You can use the elbow and touch to make sure paper, towel, and hand sanitizer is available. and make sure persons are there into the six feet or six feet apart. And please remember guys to be safe, follow the protocols, Use your research plan and don't, don't forget to call your health hotline and visit our website. Is it research plan or response plan? I heard research Pardon, plan. Sir? I heard research plan. It's a response plan, sir. Response plan, sir. Thank you. So you can visit our website at www.worldheadorganization.com. And please make sure that a register is being signed. So all the names of the person who attended the meetings, inf information is being captured and inform and the participant will be informed if someone had contracted the COVID-19 virus and as I said before in the previous side that as before the meeting start a temperature check you're required for your temperature to be checked Okay, good night, everyone. So if there is there comes a opportunity to travel and for example, there are business meetings to be attended and matters to be handled, you will be thinking of traveling. So while traveling, we want you to encourage employees to we are seeing question sign on being projected and not understanding oh. while traveling. Okay, all right. Continue. Okay. So if you're thinking of traveling, before traveling, you want to ensure that your employees have inform the latest information, as in countries where COVID-19 is being spread and they will be at a risk. You can find this information on our various websites. So ensure that the employees who has higher risk of serious illness 
for example, the, the older employees and those with medical conditions like diabetes or heart or lung disease, you would want to brief these persons so they you would not allow these persons to travel. You want to also ensure that they know about the various health facilities and who they can contact just in case they are having any symptoms that is related to COVID-19. All right, while traveling, encourage, encourage employees to wash their hands regularly and follow the restriction and procedures provided by those in authority. When these persons have returned to the organization, you still have a job to do. You have to help these employees to or ensure that they do monitor themselves and just in case they get help aid. And as a previous slide has said, if their temperature is above 37 degrees Celsius, then you know that you will have to get health aid for that. Okay, so we also have to think about the community because this is where you do your business. And what you would want to do is develop a plan. Say, for example, a person from the community comes to your organization and they contract the virus there, you would want to know what you would do in such a case. And next thing you would like to do is to promote tele teleworking. So person, so this requires the organization to have a contingency plan that is a plan B, just in case the virus outbreaks in that community, you would want to have measures in place so that persons can work from home because they can't shut down business because the business must go on. So you just have to come up with a plan and communicate this to your employees and your contractors that, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Tashai? Are we supposed to be hearing or we are just supposed to be seeing something? If we're supposed to be hearing, we're not hearing anything at all. So remember that when you're going to present, you have to check the oh. audio button on um, that is built into Zoom. So we're not hearing anything. So I'm not sure if we are supposed to be hearing something. Yes, sir. You're supposed to. Let me share. Okay. Okay.
that I did. Okay, so that video was just basically showing how how the virus has spread and it will reach into our organization. And so we have to sanitize and disinfect our areas regularly and stay abreast with information that is provided to us. Are you finished? Hello, are you guys finished? Kamala Harrison and the other members, are you guys finished? I'm not sure. I'm not hearing any response. Anybody's in the class? Let me just check to see if persons are still here. Yes, sir, we are hearing you. No. No, sorry, it wasn't. Fin I don't think she's finished. Probably she get um cut off or something. Probably the internet. Connected. Yes, sir, giving problem. Okay, all right. Um, while she comes back or tries to get back on, um, is it Tashi Muirhead? Go ahead, your group for me, please. Tashe Muirhead. All these persons whose name I'm calling and they're not responding. Um, carry on daily, you did your group went already? So carry on. Yes. Oh, you were in the one of the, you were in the first group. Yes, second. Second, okay. Um Jahim. Glenel, can you go ahead for me? Is it that you're telling me that the person who, who doesn't have PowerPoint and who has it and who doesn't have it? There no layer. Okay, all right. Kamala Harrison, your group went already? Yes, sir. It's Kamala, get caught disconnected. Oh, that's right. She wasn't responding. Carry on daily, your group went already? <laughs> sorry. Yes, sir. I just, I just reply. Me, Kamala, Patricia. Chazelle. Yeah, it's just that I can I know I wrote it down, but I don't know where my list is. I know it's in my book, but all right, Yannick Johnson, talk to me. Yes, sir. Went already, or you're presenting? No. Now? I'm going to present now. Okay, go ahead for me. Remember to email your presentations with the names and ID numbers. Sir, please confirm if you have received from group four. I did. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Johnson. And my group member and I, Olivia Williams, will be presenting on how you can get your workplace ready for COVID-19. First, what is corona? What is coronavirus? Coronavirus is a respiratory virus that causes an infection in your nose, sinus, or your upper throat. How COVID-19 is spread. It is spread by coughing and sneezing, touching surfaces that is contaminated by the virus, standing within one meter of a person with the virus. So these pictures are showing how you can, how it is actually spread, like coughing, you see the droplets, touching contaminated surfaces like the elevator buttons and speaking um, to a person without wearing a mask. The symptoms of COVID, coughing, shortness of breath, fever, headache, sore throat, and chest pain. You can prevent COVID by washing your hands, staying six feet apart, sanitizing, and wearing a mask. 
this is a video that will show how you can how you can keep your workplace safe from COVID. I think you need to turn on the, the, the audio. So you need to go back and reassure and turn on the audio, okay? Are we supposed to be hearing something? You're not hearing? No, we're not hearing. So just re, re, um, go back. You have to go back um, and then click on the audio. Yes. Just reshare. You have to go back to share. No, no, no. Go to share screen back in um, Zoom. And then mm -hmm. to the bottom, dot bottom right, you'll see something that you have to check. Not on the PowerPoint, you know, in Zoom. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Okay. Share screen is at the bottom of your, it's, it, just look at the extreme bottom of your page and you're going to see security participants chat, share screen. You click on that and then, it, then you'll see something that you have to check. You need to stop sharing, but you're not going to see it if you're still sharing because I'm seeing a screen. You need to stop sharing first. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Stop sharing. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. Stop sharing. Right. And then no, go back now to share screen. And then you look to your bottom right. You should see something that says that you're supposed to optimize audio or something like something to that effect. Okay. Oh. Still not How can my workplace be safe during COVID-19? It's a tough question. To help you find the answer, Ontario has put together a safety plan document that you can find at wsps.ca slash COVID-19. It will ask you some other questions that will help you and your team put together a plan to work safely that makes sense for your workplace. Questions like, how will you share information and keep your team safe? Decide on a consistent method for the entire team to stay informed, like email, regular meetings, or posting info in a common area, as safety guidelines and best practices change with Ontario's situation. Another question, how will you screen for COVID-19? Think about how you'll screen workers and customers for symptoms, either in person, by phone, or online to ensure it's safe for them to enter your workplace. Also, think of who needs to be screened and how often. On our website, you'll find a checklist to screen your employees before they come into work. Third question, how will you control COVID-19 transmission? Remember that controls are key. This includes implementing new measures for physical distancing and separation disinfecting workspaces, and promoting good hand hygiene. It's the employer's responsibility to research new approaches and implement them. Question four, what will you do about a potential exposure in your workplace? If someone in your workplace is exposed, do you know who to call? How will you help public health to do contact tracing? Our online resources can help you build an action plan to deal with potential exposures. Five, how will you manage any new risks? A lot is changing, and that can lead to different, even unexpected risks. Think of new potential risks to workers, like stress or staff having to move products alone and create plans that can adapt and work for everyone. Finally, question six, how will you make sure your safety plan is working? Think of ways to regularly review your plan and get input to improve it. Something as simple as a team meeting to share feedback can go a long way. We owe it to each other to keep our workplaces safe. 
And it starts with asking tough questions. But with the right answers and the right plan, we can all feel good about a good day's work. Get more details and a template to create your own safety plan at wsps.ca COVID-19. WSPS, protecting potential. Ano, ano, Pastor Oliver? Yeah, yes. So this is um prevention of COVID-19 at meetings. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Um, good evening, everyone. All right. Prevention of COVID-19 at meetings. So you yeah, have like a definition. So um, COVID is you have to prevent prevention everywhere. So meeting is one of the most important place you have to do because everyone is there uh, from different ages as well as um, different persons worldwide. So here we have um, preparing a meeting is the high risk of contact, um, contacting COVID-19. Attendees may bring the virus unknowingly or willfully. There are different age groups such as persons in their 50s and older that have underlying illnesses and this will greatly affect them. Before the meeting. So before you um, have your meeting or conduct a meeting, you first need to get advice from your authorities. And, uh, and where would the meeting be kept? Then, for, then next, you will develop and prepare a plan to prevent infection. Within, within like the organization, they will like um, confirm whether they want to do it um, teleconference or online. So that is preferably within the organization or they want to do it. So they will decide how many person would attend the meeting. You will also um, pre-order sufficient supplies, seeing that it's, um, it's a pandemic season, so you supply masks, sanitizer, health kit, and so on. You also will plan your response, plan a response in case someone became ill or show signs of symptoms of COVID-19. Um, during the meeting, you will all you will also um provide information both orally and written. You will also um display um alcohol or sanitizer around the facility. Seats will arrange one meter apart. Also, the um the meeting where the way the um, the place where the meeting will keep it will be uh, vent will have doors and windows for ventilation possible. If anyone um at the meeting or any participant at the meeting showing any signs of COVID, we will follow through our response plan. After the meeting. After the meeting, we will keep all details of each participant, you know, um, address and phone number to help the health, health organization to trace person who may be exposed to COVID-19. If person at the meeting isolate for any signs of COVID-19, the organization, organizer, organ, organizer, organizer, should inform the participants and be advised to check their temperature regularly. Uh, we will also thank all the participants for their cooperation with the provision in place. Uh, things to consider when traveling. Before traveling. So you first check um, COVID-19 risk of the area you're traveling to. Avoid person in their avoid elderly person or person with any medical condition such as 
diabetes, um, heart and lung disease. All persons um, traveling to a location reported COVID-19 should be briefed by a qualified healthcare professional. During traveling, um, watch, wash hands regularly and stay at least one meter away from people who are coughing or sneezing. Um, also, be aware of what to do or uh, who to contact if you feel unwell or sick while traveling. Comply with instructions from local authorities or restrictions on travel, movement, and large gathering. After traveling, monitor yourself for any symptoms or sign for two weeks and take temperature twice a day. Stay at home and self-isolate for even mild symptoms that if you show any signs of or any signs of um, low fever. Visit your health care provider, the local public health department, giving them details of their recent travel and symptoms. Okay, so what to do when, when you contract COVID-19? First, you quarantine at home, or if your symptoms are severe, then you go to the hospital. You will contact your health organizations. You will inform them that you have COVID-19. You monitor your symptoms. You get moral support, and you keep in contact with your doctor. So, if you need more information, you can visit our website. So that's the end of our presentation. All right. Um, so it was a nicely put together presentation. I felt though that I, I like the blend of the varying content. So I got image, I got text, I got audio. I think the images were nicely done. I think some slides had a little bit too much text, but I don't think it was overbearing. I felt though that at times, for example, there was a slide that had on several different images with text and the person were, the, the presenter read everyone. And I'm saying, you don't need to read, you just need to say, okay, here's an image demonstrating how you do this. Then this is an image demonstrating how you do this or don't do this. The person was just reading as if they were not, as if they were not familiar with the content. And remember, even though I'm not, you're not being graded on the, on the quote unquote, delivery of the presentation of course you want if you're if you're doing it in a business setting you want to come across as being very knowledgeable especially from a reputable organization such as um as especially from a reputable um international body such as the world Health organization you want to come across as very you know knowledgeable and things like that but i think it was well put together it was very visual it was very um like the others, the other press. I'm just hoping that you guys did it on your own and you didn't go and get help. That's what my biggest concern is because if you got help from outside persons, then you are not going to be able to replicate it in the workplace. And as I said to you before, this is something that you can sell when you go for an interview, especially let us say that you're going for an admin support person or you want to become a business administration an assistant or something like that. These are the kinds of skills that you would want. All right. Uh, so thank you very much, Yanni, and, and your group members. Is there any group that has not presented? Any group that has not presented? Okay, so all the groups. Jami, Jaheem, I, I don't know what is happening. Olivia Williams, your group went? Just yes, checking. Sir. Just checking, just checking. Um, I'm not picking on you. Um, so Jaheem, who are the persons in your group? Uh, Renee Richards, you're about to say something. Go ahead. What if some what if somebody did not come to class last week? Um, how the person will get a grade? I'm just asking. They can't get a grade because one, if you miss class, this is why I make sure to immediately upload the the recordings onto the YouTube channel. I notice I always 
as the class ends, I upload them to, to um, you can't get a grade for that which you have not done. Okay. So missing class is not an excuse. You're supposed to find out what is happening. And how do you find out what is happening? You go to the YouTube channel or you, you, we have a WhatsApp group. That's why we have a WhatsApp group. So that persons can converse. All right. So I'm not going to give anybody any five marks for not doing any work. I don't work that way. All right. Any group? Yes, sir, you should do it. Can she send it to you? She has Can to she present. present. No, she has to present. You can, and it's going to be late too. All right, um, so I'm seeing something in the. Um, Kamala Harrison, you're speaking to me. I, I don't understand the message. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. No, not you. Okay, you're sending it to somebody, but you'll send it to everybody. Lord oh, Jesus. My apologies. All right. So you're having some group issues, but of course you guys will work out the dynamics in the group. All right, so I'm going to pause here for tonight. I think we can end early. You guys have been doing a tremendous, uh, uh, you have been doing a lot of work. Um, we can pause here tonight and a little early tonight. I think we all need some amount of rest. I'm sure you did a lot of work to, pre um, to prepare for your presentation. Are there any questions, comments, queries, or concerns? Thank you, sir. All right, welcome. Thank you, sir. All righty. Sir, I can see your grades. Say that again. I uh, know we cannot see your grades. Which grades? You grade? need to go and move on an area. Sir, oh. I sent you an email as well. well. It is email not about possible. what? Sir, I copied in an email that I'm not seeing my account grade any at all. And I'm I saw your email, but I cannot respond because Remember, no, you have copied, you have directed the email to the higher authorities. So I'm copied and I saw it, and I'm hoping that they will respond. Um, um, but I Sir, can't respond. Not because as yet. From last week or the week before, no, that's, it, but, that's the reason I put it in it this time around. All right. Sir, so a little interjection. Hold on, hold uh, on, hold on. Let me just hold on. So this, it was directed to the head of school for business. Yes, sir. Previously, I emailed Mr. Riley, no response. So, no, I sent another one and copied you in it. Uh, remind me of the email address. I'm going, to, I'm going to look for it now and, and, and send it to him via WhatsApp. Remind me of the email address. Rene, how we go? Rene dot Richards 14. So R E N E E dot Richards. What's it? Do you remember the title of the email? Um, Again, so I'm like outstanding grade for a call. All right, so let, me, type, let yeah. me see if I can assist you now. Outstanding, outstanding. Sir, even today, me I call the school. I'm planning no, plan to go there. Hello, you don't see. I said no, it's at the school lockdown. You know, they're no, locked down, they're not in. Oh, I call him from last week. I'll today, I'm gonna hear them. No, we are we have been closed because we had a COVID case. Okay. So it's can our, I go? Can I go after George, please? R E N E E, sir. R E N E E. Dot Richards. At Heart Trust. No so man, Renee I'm thinking of my school email. So it's, so it's Renee that Richards fourteen at my ECC. Yeah. All right. So let me go and find the email. Yeah. Uh, I think I just saw the email. So the email disappeared to Renee that Richards. Hold on. This thing is playing tricks. I'm sure I saw the email. No, I saw your email, you know, and because you directed it at Mr. Riley, I just said to myself that he will respond. Why am I not seeing it? I just tightened. Why do I think this email is playing games? Because I know I saw. All right, send me a WhatsApp reminder tomorrow, okay? Or right, if you if you just forward back the email to me and I'll have the matter, I'll talk to him personally tomorrow, okay? Mr. Riley, no respond to email, no matter. No, man, I will get him to respond. I'll call him personally and have him respond to you guys. Sir, can I speak yeah. now? Go ahead. Sir, I was saying, um, as pertaining to Renee, 
Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking to my accounts teacher and he was saying that the accounts grades would be um would be entered a little late because um there were some mix up with some um retrievals. Mm -hmm. So therefore it it it's not going to be um it wouldn't have been there between last week and they are not sure for this week. So, so that is why I was... everyone in my class got their grade. Everyone except me. I mean, like everyone. Well, I guess maybe you're one day in the mix up pal, because that was the same thing that was happening to another young lady in my so class. What I, so thanks for that, Georgia. I, what I'll do, I'll just double check. So just just remember to to re forward the email to me, okay, Renee? Justin, sir, thank you so much. All right, let me see if it comes up. I'm not seeing. Hold on. Yeah, Patricia. Let me Good okay. afternoon, sir. All right, so let me copy. Let me just do it right now, like oh, because sometimes if I so trust me, he will respond to me. Riley. And I'm going to also send it to the, the assistant head of school. Um you know. Because I know she's the one that is direct with um uh, uh all right somebody I else know so, my name especially you know oh. <laughs> all right go ahead um the other person who wanted to say something okay so um I was saying when I like when I go on my area and thing mm -hmm. I am not seeing semester one I usually I usually see it there and I saw where I get one grade, but then when I go back, I'm only seeing semester two. I'm not sure. I honestly don't know because I know I taught you last semester and I sent in those grades decades ago. I made sure because your paper was very easy to mark. I remember all your grades, your grades were very good. In addition to the other persons who are in this course, my evening students did very, very well. All the students who came to the class passed the course. And I even told you guys who passed I told who passed, but I never said who failed. But all the persons who were always at the class passed the course. I don't know why they're not posting the grades because I know how. Well, I can see, see, see the semester one, none at all. All right. Um, send, me all email, send, email to, send me an email at info at ecc.edu.jm and I'll okay. ask Dr. Malcolm and the head of the director for exams to find out what okay. is happening. Okay, sir. Um, So Leela just responded, this is an email from one of my students. Um, um, who has not, who is not, who is not seeing her grade on AEOR Arian while her, while all her, I hope you're not telling me any line or all her classmates' grades uh -uh. are, have been released, uh -huh. have been released. Sometimes, so as I said, I, I'm going to keep up, um, try to see if I can resolve this issue for you guys. Yes, sir. Thank uh, excuse you. Excuse me. I just need some explanation or clarification. I'm currently looking at mine, and I'm going to see grade for one. I know you told us our grades before, but I'm going to see it for fundamentals of IT. All right. So Mr. Riley says, which course? So be Fundamentals of accounts. So funda fundamental of accounts. Told you he was... Nick McEaron can show me which group I was in. Let me try to find it. Sir, put service on fundamental of accounting, communication one. Sir, I was in group um, four. Yes, Erin is showing me. I was in group four. She was in group four. Speaking to her now. To her now. We have a class until nine sir do you want my id number even though it was stated in the email no man your, your id number is already in the email okay hold on i'm going to listen to a voice note that i don't want you to hear okay
you, did you complete your registration, Renee? Yes, sir. I was registered for all of my courses. Okay. I all did right. all the exams too. Okay. Hold on. Did you see, are you seeing grades for any other course? Yes, sir. I am seeing my grade for communication, IT. The only grades I'm not seeing is for management, which nobody has said they receive any management grade, and I'm not seeing any for account, which everybody else in my group got their accounts grade as well. So, right, so there are two things happening because I was speaking to Miss is Lila Faulkner, who's the assistant, and who she's the one that really verifies grades. Um, the challenge for her, she's saying, is that because the school is locked down and she has to verify the grades on the system, and to be frank, some of the lecturers um, have handed their grade sheet very late, and it makes her job a little bit more difficult because she now has to go in to physically check to kind of verify the grades so until we return to work um i think it's another i think you have to look for it next week not this week okay, unfortunately sir. but really? sir yes sir you handed in your grade for us early sir but i'm not seeing your grade on my thing either i have no idea and i sent it off to I sent it off to the heads. I sent it off to the different schools because one school said that they should still send it to them. So I sent it to the School of um, Liberal Arts and I sent it to Sobez. And that, this is why I deliberately told it if you pass or fail because I knew something like this was going to happen. It happened every year. That's why I deliberately told you if you pass the course because students need to know and it doesn't happen elsewhere. You cannot go into a new semester without knowing your grades for the, sem the first semester. Sir, but won't this grade override the first one, um, this second semester, if it is that these results are not out as yet? I don't understand the question or the statement. Sir, for these grades that are absent, being that it won't be up as yet, the remaining grades for semester two, will it affect these? Well, it should affect it because remember, you know, we're not supposed to do for example, you're not supposed to do communication to unless you're passing on one. And the challenge is if students don't know that they have not passed communication on one grade, how does the school account for that? Because the student cannot be held liable. You can't then say to the students, so we can't do communication too, because it's not the student's fault why they did not get their grade on time. It's the institution's fault. And this is why I, I years ago I was I, I was I used to hand in my grades a little bit late and I made sure this time around when I started marking um, as I gave you the assignment or whatever I do I just mark it instantaneously. For example, for the PowerPoint presentation for almost everybody I am going to give you four or five once you have done it and you are presented in class because I can't mark it for delivery I have to mark for just the presentation itself. And if it is very good, um, five or four and I move on, I'm going to ensure that the mid semester is not anything that is going to be difficult for me to mark because I have two groups so that you can get back the grades quickly. So I, I don't know, it's not, it's not even the head's fault, it's not Mr. Riley's fault or um, Mrs. Leela Farkins's fault. Sometimes it's the lecturers who take very long and then sometimes it's not the lecturers because the lecturers are giving the exam for late by triple CJ or they're having 300 students in one class, 180 students in one class, and they have five different sets of assignments to mark. So time, 100 times um, times five, that's what 500 assignments. So they're overwhelmed. So there are so many factors at play. It's something that the institution has been grappling with, with over the years. So sir, okay. sir, uh, well, I I mean, okay. it, it seems as if this thing don't plan out properly because I was in class Saturday mm -hmm. and we heard that uh, some students have to be going into other classes because that particular particular class that they, are in, they were in doesn't have enough students in it. So they have to split them and send them to other classes. When those other classes have already reached far in the teaching, it does not make any sense. 
Well, in that, that happened case, so, in the last semester. Well, I'll say this though that if it that day, no, it's not something that is unique to Exed. So universities across the world or colleges across the world, if the class is too small, they usually ask the students to go into another group. What really should happen with the other group is that each, because we're teaching from the same um, quote unquote curriculum, when you enter that class, you should not be behind because I'm teaching in week one is what the other lecturers are supposed to be teaching in week one. No, sir, but look, look at this, sir. Remember, remember that students choose their subject based on their time schedule. So right. obviously they're going to have a clash. As one person said in the class, they're going to have IT clash when they have um, class on Friday. So hold mm -hmm. that. So what are they going to do? I agree that, that it poses a lot of um, issues, especially for mm -hmm. persons like yourself. Who are working students? I know it's. I, I even I was an evening student too when I was doing my masters and my postgraduate diploma, and even when I studied in Canada and all of that. So I know there are serious um, challenges, and it always puts the evening and weekend students at a disadvantage. So I know that those issues happen. We try our best to accommodate it by you know having some school or suggesting to the students sometimes if they can do it in another semester or so forth. Jahim Glenelly can send me a PowerPoint. You know, I want the presentation. So I don't know why you're sending me a PowerPoint. I'm giving a presentation. And all these long explanations are not, you, only if you're granted dead, you're not accepting the, the, the excuse. So you, you could have sent me an email till Jesus come. We want the presentation. That's what I'm teaching. I'm not teaching you to, to email me excuses. I want a presentation. That's what I want. So if you want to present the next class, you're on your group members, I'm still going to take off one point. So you're going to be graded out of four. No problem. But you could do the presentation. I don't care. If the, if the sky fall, I don't care you're doing the presentation. So I can share my screen with you so I can see what I was talking about with the, the, the semester thing. Go ahead. Once you don't want, once you're not revealing anything that they consider to be confidential with your classmates, you should never let your classmates know your ID number. At least not everybody should know your ID number. Um, so you are not seeing Right. Oh, you're not seeing semester one at all. So, Dion, I know Miss Collins, Lorna McCoy, financial accounting one, Leela teaches computerized accounting, principles of marketing is Mrs. Blythe McLeod. So, what are you showing me exactly, though? Oh, you're saying you're not seeing so anything? I'm not seeing semester all. one at all. Yeah. All right. right. Scroll up for me. Scroll up for me, let me see. Just scroll up. Go all the way up. Okay. Um, you see, I've never seen the student side, you know. Uh, go to home. Let me see what's at home. You are supposed to see it. I don't know why you're not seeing it. Yeah, you're supposed to see it because. All right, go. Um, scroll down a little. Let me see on the academics. What's on the academics? All grades, program check, graduation application. All right, it's not there. My timetable, view general timetable, check status. It should be there. I'm not sure why it's not there. So it's the one with GPA. She should go under view my GPA. And she'll see the courses? Under my info. All right, so click on the GPA. Let's see what's there. And where would she click? Undergraduate? Undergraduate. Oh, so here's what's your GPA. mark is there? Your GPA is there already, 3.67. 3. So if the GPA is there, the grades are. But I, I understand that you want to see the actual courses. Right. Yeah, because you want to know. Right, where, because what, usually, I, usually I would see the semester one. And the and GPA, the the GPA and the, is all for that. the IT. Right, that was the right. only grade I got. Yes. In other words, the GPA that is there is only for one course. Right. It's, right. Not for the, it's not for the, I suppose they haven't sorted that out as yet. But I suggest you screenshot it. You can screenshot, screenshot it and send it to me. All right, then, sir. Thanks. All right. I'll have to really call Dr. Malcolm tomorrow and talk to her about these issues. Dr. Malcolm has been begging the lecturers to start this tomorrow, but my God. Um, the recordings are on 
if he's in the class. He doesn't know that he's on the YouTube. Have you guys been checking out the YouTube channel? Never. Yes, sir. I don't even know if I check that. You're just going to YouTube and type in my email address, Robin that Clark. Penny, that's sad. Sir, I'm not time. Turn on the notification bell and you will receive everything. Yeah, so once you, you come back, the thing is to Renee, if you're at class and you're participating, you know, and you know what is happening, you don't necessarily need to go to the recordings. It's really for persons who might not have understood what is happening or persons who miss class. But if you are here and you're always here and you're always participating, probably that's why you don't have a general interest in going there because you're here and you're, and you're in the know and you're always asking questions, which is actually good. So you probably don't need necessarily to go there, but it's there for persons. And sometimes when I'm absent, like for example, a friend of mine did a guest lecture on PowerPoint. The presentation that he did in the class, I had to replay it for the day students because he was not available to do it for them. And they are now working on their presentation. All right, guys, we're going to go on the bed for me, no? Later. Yes, sir. Thanks. I'm tired. Yes, so I'll see you guys you on Wednesday. You too. Wednesday, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.